Hey guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel to go funny lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with the friends, and of course do not forget to subscribe if I if you're new, welcome, hit that subscription button. And feel free to suggest anything that you guys want us to react to because we're open to everything. Um, religious videos, adverts, campaigns, whatever the case you want us to react to, we'll be more than glad to do it. Um, a big shout out to the person that suggested this. They suggested I react to Malcolm X and um, Hamza Yusuf. I think this was a suggestion given back but um but i'm now going to um re react to everything that you guys suggested and hopefully we're going to catch up soon so without wasting time let's get into the video we have a whole nation of people that can read but don't necessarily understand and if you want proof for that just look at any comments on social media about statements that you just read and you if you understood them just read down what people have to say and you'll realize how illiterate our culture is he said that he read history he read will durant's story of civilization a multi-volume -vol uh, history of the world he read hg wells outline of history he read herodotus he read arnold toynbee and there was a brilliant library that he said would have been the envy of colleges and universities that had been donated to the prison. You can see the divine hand in the education of this man. He read, he said he read philosophy. If you go to Alcatraz and, and visit Alcatraz, they have a little prison library in there. It's not, the books aren't there anymore. But on the wall, it says the inmate, inmates were particularly interested in philosophy and would check out Kant and other philosophers. He said he read Kant, Schopenhauer, Nietzsche. He was particularly struck by Spinoza. And, and one of the things that he said that he felt that Western civilization had ended up in a cool day sack. And I, I, I don't think it could be summed up any better than that, the crisis of Western civilization. But he was once asked, he also got into African-American history. He read uh, W.E.B. Du Bois or Du Bois. And he read his uh, about the soul of black folks and, and also read uh, 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 Carter Woodson's Negro History. He read a three volume uh, book on race and sex and race. He also said that he read Mendel's book on genetics several times, particularly passages from it. And he said the book made clear to him that you could not get a black man from a white man, but you could get a white man from a black man, which substantiated his belief that the first human beings were dark, which according to our tradition, Adam, Udmat al Ard, Adam is Tani, it means dark, and Hawa means black. So it wouldn't be at all inconsistent with our understanding of the first people, and we now know that they were probably from South Africa. So we're all Africans, right? Tell that to the crackers. <laughs> You're a mutation. <laughs> Melatonin deficiency. <laughs> Some people say that that's part of the problem with the behavior is it's just a deficiency. And <laughs> this, this man was a highly educated man who I would argue that he had a far superior education to many of the PhDs and college graduates. He definitely knew uh, rhetoric. He knew logic. You can clearly see his knowledge of logic is displayed constantly in his argumentation. His pointing out fallacies, logical fallacies. Somebody accused him of being a communist. He said, How, why would you conclude that? And he said, you spoke at the socialist, uh, you know, at some uh, venue of communists in New York. He said, I spoke at Dr. King's church. Does that make me a follower of Dr. King? He said, I spoke last week at the Methodist church. Does that make me a Methodist? Right? This is, this is logic. So when he, he said, every time I catch a plane, I have with me a book I want to read. Right? 
And that's a lot of books these days. If I weren't out here every day battling the white man, I could spend the rest of my life reading, just satisfying my curiosity, because you can hardly mention anything I'm not curious about. I don't think anyone got more out of prison than I did. In fact, prison enabled me to study far more intensely than I ever would have if my life had gone differently and I had attended some college. I imagine that one of the biggest troubles, listen up Zaytuna students, one of the biggest troubles with colleges is there are too many distractions. Too much panty raiding, fraternities, and bula bula, and all that. So this man did not get to the Oxford Union, where I spoke at the Oxford Union. When I walked in, they give you a standing ovation just for getting there. You don't, you don't even have to give a talk after that. You just wave or something. Because just because you're at the Union, they consider it so prestigious. I mean, this is typical Anglo-Saxon pride. They consider it so prestigious that you've been invited there that you get a standing ovation just for walking in, right? So he was there December 3rd, 1963, a beautiful speech that he gave on extremism. He went toe to toe with professors from Oxford. The ovations in that speech were immense. His diction was impeccable. His elocution is beautiful. He did not speak slang. If he spoke slang, it was for rhetorical effect, which is actually a trope in rhetoric, is to use we was robbed. That's a rhetorical trope that can be used. So Malcolm knew rhetoric and he used it to great effectiveness. He was an extraordinary orator, but he was an educated mind. And this is what has to be understood. This man struggled with great difficulty to educate himself. And he spent years, he read, he would read till three in the morning in prison. He would read with the light of the hall. And every 58 minutes he would go because the guard would come by and they weren't allowed to be up at that time and he would pretend to be asleep. The guard would leave and he would go back and start reading again. This was Malcolm. So when you see this man, you have to understand that this, this is not something that just came down. All of these gifted people, their great gift is discipline. Their great gift is the ability to struggle against themselves and overcome laziness, overcome the temptations to go the easy way. This is what Malcolm was. He was a highly disciplined individual. He was disciplined morally, he was disciplined intellectually, and he was disciplined spiritually. When his brother Reginald was thrown out, he spent the entire night in prayer. So he was a man of prayer. And, and these are important things to remember. And finally, in conclusion, it would be difficult to, Malcolm died at 39. It's, it's hard to believe that he was so young when his life was taken away. I mean, that's when the prophets begin at the age of 40. That, that's when, when the intellect really begins to mature and, 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 and it reaches its, its real uh, height um, you know, during those, those years. So we don't know what would have happened and I'm not gonna speculate, but one of the last speeches that he gave, and he stopped using black nationalism in, in that last period because he was struggling with trying to grapple with what the real problem was. And he recognized that there were, there were whites in Algeria that he met, Berbers that are white that he met, that said they, they didn't resonate with that word black nationalism. So he was struggling in himself to find something. But he was asked one month before he was killed, what do you think is responsible for race prejudice in the US? And Malcolm said, ignorance and greed and a skillfully designed program of miseducation that goes right along with the American system of exploitation and oppression. So it takes education to eliminate it. And just because you have colleges and universities does not mean you have education. The colleges and universities in the American educational system are skillfully used to miseducate. I couldn't put it better. Would you mind telling me what your father's last name was? My father didn't know his last name. My father got his last name from his grandfather, and his grandfather got it from his grandfather, who got it from the slave master. The real names of our people were destroyed well, during slavery. Any, was there any line uh, 
any point in, in the genealogy of your family when you did have to use the last name? And if so, what was it? The last name of my forefathers yeah. was taken from them when they were brought to America and made slaves. And then the name of the slave master was given, which we refuse. We reject that name today. You mean, you, mean to... you won't even tell me what your father's supposed last name was or gifted last name was? I never acknowledge it whatsoever. I'm asking myself what took me so long to come back and start doing reactions. This was a very, very um, educative video. Just because there's school systems, not just in America, around the world, it doesn't mean we're actually getting educated. Those systems have been programmed to, those systems are programmed in a certain way that makes us see things the way they want us to see things. Look at the education in Africa. I think I've spoken about this. Look at the education in Africa. We're not even learning our own history. We learn their history. When you go out there, they don't even know what Zambia is. They don't even know what, um, maybe South Africa, they can try. They don't even know what Zimbabwe is. They don't even know what, um, what no congo is quite known they just don't know nothing or anything about you and yet here we are taking pride saying i went to an international school or i go to an international school just to learn their history just to learn how they colonize you just to learn how it's it's a little bit tricky but then I, I'm not saying school is bad. School, school, is, school is very, very interesting. Go out there, get your education at whatever school you want, fine. But don't limit your knowledge to just what you're taught in school. Go out there, research, watch news, and come up with your own opinion. Don't come up with the opinion of what's in the books that were given at school. Don't just think the way we've been taught to think. Think on your own. Have a mind of your own. And here we're seeing this video that saying this guy was in prison. Um, had he gone to um, normal school, he thinks he wouldn't have um, learned all the things that he learned while reading. There's a lot of uh, information in books today. And it's, I don't even know. I don't think people read as much as they used to do. Because right now we're so busy with our laptops, our phones, so many things that distract us. Just... It's all about um, taming yourself and controlling yourself and being a, in a situation where you say, you know what, I know I can watch this, but let me dedicate this one hour to maybe reading a few pages of this book. Let me just educate myself. Let me just um, go beyond what I know and out of my comfort zone. Because, for example, me, there's certain books, there's a certain type of books that I like to read and i shouldn't just limit myself to that kind of books there's different different things read about war um read about um development read about whatever you want to read about many things to read out there you you'll be shocked at what you can find out there anyway let me know what you guys actually think about this a big shout out to the person that suggested this loved this enjoyed it like i said very very educative did you guys pick up anything from this video do you think ah uh, Let's just brush this aside. What are your thoughts? Otherwise, if there's something that you guys want me to react to, drop the link in the comment section below and I'll be more than glad to react to it. Uh, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe and I'll see you in my next reaction video.